Thank you, Your Honor. Justice Abad first, whom, uh, whose uh, second round turn has been quite deferred. Okay, uh, he has uh, very graciously agreed uh, to Justice very, Pepe. Uh, fundamental question. It, it looks from the drift of your answer to the questions of Justice Bernabe that you are now uh, addressing the wisdom of the law. And of course, that is not our territory. That is the territory of the legislature. Let me finish. It will help you. The fact that the law allows the prevention of fertilization is not that what you are complaining about. The fact that the government itself is propagating, uh, putting in money, in order to allow the prevention of fertilization, is that that which is ob constitutionally objectionable? Um, it's also obje objectionable, Your Honor, because that prevents, I mean, that's a birth control measure. Um, or, all right. So you are saying that uh, birth control is, you are abandoning the position that birth control is uh, subject to constitutional objections? You are saying it's good? You're I'm, saying it's no, no. I, I don't. Oh, okay. I, I'm not saying I'm it's good. You. I'm not. I'm not saying it's good, Your Honor. That's uh, what I'm suggesting. That's what I'm telling you. Your strongest point is to go or to question the constitutionality of the basic objective of the reproductive law, and that is. I am uh, getting this drift from uh, the opening statement of uh, Senator Tatat that this is a population control or a birth control measure, and that is what is constitutionally objectionable. That is your strong point, rather than the point of implantation, etc. The fact that the law allows, not just allows, uh, propagates, makes it a government policy to prevent fertilization, that is objectionable. I suggest, or I, I would uh, I will, tell you. Yes, Your Honor, we will... Uh, Include that in the memorandum. Uh, Justice right? Abad. Constitutional basis for that argument. Actually, uh, this law is an exercise of uh, police power, in a sense, actually, because it governs, uh, it regulates uh, human conduct, prescribes certain actions. So it's an exercise of, this, of uh, uh, police power. And uh, the rule in police power is that uh, first there must be a proper subject of uh, regulation. Uh, pro not everything in this world should, can be subject of regulation. For example, my choice of my wife, who I will be my wife, cannot be subject of government regulation. So there are things that usually the ones that are subject to uh, to regulation or exercise the police power, those that refer to human behavior, like uh, uh, criminal laws, they are to prevent men from committing crimes or to punish them when they commit crimes, or those concerning traffic laws or a lot of human behavior. But is, is nature, altering nature, a proper subject of legislation, no? especially when it refers to birth. We cannot outlaw the storms or the typhoons, no? because uh, that cannot be done. But we are willing, we are willing to uh, to reduce in a woman a healthy woman with a healthy, healthy ovum or eggs, and we want to give him chemicals that will make those eggs unhealthy so they cannot be fertilized. Huh? We poison the egg to make it, to disable it from receiving the sperm that will yes, fertilize it. Yes, yes, yes. So we are legislating things that affect the human body in the normal course. We are teaching our people these things. So this, that's unconstitutional. That's not improper exercise of police power. Don't you think so? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. The only thing that's the, it's not something to, it is happening. No? Uh, we people try to tamper with, with human life. No, well, we can regulate other things probably, but human life, we tamper with it. If my parents did, 
when in when the time I was born, maybe I'll not be here anymore. None of us will be here. Like this were so. Precisely, yeah, that's true. Good. <laughs> and uh, we are we are we are poor. We are land poor. This country is land poor. Actually, we have so many people they cannot produce enough. Food. Actually, compared to the price of food in Australia, the place where I've been, we a lot of the the income of people are spent on food because there's no food. We are not able to produce cheap food. So one, that's one of the problems. So what has saved us, in a way? What has saved us are the people that we produced. The people that became overseas workers and that brought wealth to us. That's what has saved us, actually. So if we want to tamper with that also. We want to remove our capability to have Filipinos born out of the normal course of natural life and tamper with the process that God made for producing life. That is what I think is not a proper subject. Constitutionally, that's unconstitutional. An improper exercise of police power. Yes, Your Honor. Do you agree? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> yes, yes, Your Honor. Thank you, thank you, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, Justice De Castro, first. I will pursue the uh, point uh, raised by uh, Justice Perez. No? Uh, I noticed that in the law, there is a provision saying that there shall be no demographic or population targets and that the mitigation, promotion, and or stabilization of population growth is incidental to the advancement of reproductive health. But in another provision, there is a need to conduct studies to analyze demographic trends, including demographic dividends from sound population policies. So it would seem that the law is, in, is uh, intimately connected to population control. Con population control, yes. yes. Um, and um, another point, it would seem that the target of, of this law uh, are the poor and the marginalized. It would seem that uh, the number, uh, the poor should not be, uh, under this law, should not be allowed to multiply because uh, the, the supplies and the health care provided by, by this law is give, given uh, to the poor as uh, the principal target of, uh, of this law. I, I not noticed uh, several provisions referring to the poor and the marginalized in the distribution yes. of um, health care um, supplies and um, services. Yes, Your Honor. That's true. Thank you, Justice De Castro. Justice Leonin. I also noticed something in the law. Uh, this is in uh, Section 3, subparagraph F. Number one, may, may you read uh, for the record the proviso of number one? Section three. F, number one, the proviso, before the number two. The state shall promote programs, is no, that? No, no, uh, this is section I'm three. Sorry. F, number Sec one, section the proviso. three, F, one. Okay, provided yes. that no one shall be deprived for economic reasons of the rights to have children. Yes, and then in uh, section uh, 2, on the declaration of policy, section letter A. Section 2. A. The right of spouses to found a family in accordance with their religious convictions and the demands of responsible parenthood. And then letter D, the right of family or family associations to participate in the planning and implementation of policies and programs that affect them. The point being that there are provisions here which actually says that this is not a population control bill and it is not intended to control the number of children of those who are poor or those who are rich. But there are, of course, some provisions, I may, uh, I may admit, that left to their own devices, standing alone, not in the context of the entire statute, can be misinterpreted 
as saying that this statute is a population control measure. Again, can we go back? What is the presumption that we should give to this uh, statute? Should we give it a presumption of unconstitutionality or a presumption of constitutionality? Well, there's always that presumption of constitutionality, but it doesn't mean that that presumption may not be demolished. If the text is clear that there can be an interpretation that will allow those who will finally implement it and create the actual case uh, but, that will make it constitutional, uh, is it the function of this court to distrust the political departments or the executive that they will implement it the way that it is supposed to be designed uh, in the implementation with the, te with the clear textual provision that, number one, there will be no demographic targets, number two, that there will be no limits to children, number three, that the choice of fa the, the family with respect to the kind of family that they will build is up to them based on the religious conviction. Okay. The textual compliance, Your Honor, is with respect to every provision, but the question if is, you... Should we start with mistrusting the executive and the implementors. It's, it's uh, not a matter of mistrusting, Your Honor, when there's a, a, so the, therefore an allegation. So therefore, we should the presumption of constitutionality, but then your on we should assume unconstitutionality. But then, Your Honor, if there's an allegation of a breach of the, of the Constitution, then I think it's, um, it's, it's the duty of this honorable court to, uh, to uh, look into allegations and make sure that the but we have been constitutional meets and bounds are established. Jurisprudence, that only when there is a clear and convincing demonstration of a breach of a constitutional provision will we allow the hammer to strike down and strike down heavily, Angara versus Electoral Commission. In, the part, in this particular case, like many other cases, we have said that in cases where it can be that the political department that will implement it can interpret it the way that is constitutionally feasible, then it is not for, uh, for us, the judiciary, to actually mistrust them that they will not do what they should do. Perhaps, uh, counsel, the better, the better track might be that uh, maybe you should immediately go to the FDA, find the product, so that immediately it will be stopped in order that if it becomes an abort uh, proven to be an abortifacient, so that lives will not be put in danger well, rather than go to the court yeah. where we will have to deliberate with 15 different opinions as you can see now and uh, take a vote uh, when it is not yet necessary to take a vote because it may not be clear that the factual, the ambient facts contextualize how we will make a decision. Can that not be a possibility, Council? It's a possibility, Your Honor, but then again I have to admit it may, this may not be a, a legal question, but whether or not FDA is um, you know, is, is equipped to do that, considering that, um, you know, we're, we're protecting lives here and we're concerned about lives here of unborn that, you know, um, are, are totally helpless to do something about their situation. Then I think uh, we're, we're pleading before this honorable court to help us do something about it. Technical rules of procedure are there, but then they're not supposed to be there to delay rendition of justice or to deny um, anyone um, the fundamental right to life, Your Honor. We are, of so, course, very flattered that you will accord us good faith, whereas the FDA may not have good faith uh, in, your, in your view. Uh, it's it's a it's a concern um, that I'm trying to voice out, Your Honor, because you know it's not ordi an ordinary matter that I'm bring we're bringing before this honourable court. We're bringing something of paramount importance, Your Honor, not just to me, to the petitioners, but to each and every one of us, Your Honor. I would I would say even you know each and every one of the members of this court, because we're talking about right to life, and right to life is a concern of each one of us. It transcends religion and religious differences. As Justice Abada said, he would not have been here if, the right, uh, if his right to life was not respected. And, you know, we would have missed the, you know, um, uh, services and, uh, you know, all the contributions of Justice Abad to the Supreme Court and to the country. A fact which we also acknowledge, the paramount interest to the right to life, among others, and, of course, the paramount interest of having Justice Abad together with us today. I suppose, I hope that that right to life extends to the 
very first right uh, to the very first uh, people who are entitled to that, who Just, are the unborn. Okay. Justice Mary Samin. Thank you, Chief. Uh, before you are uh, dismissed, I think the Chief Justice will soon dismiss you. <laughs> I just wanted to know if you were uh, about ready to give us some medical uh, data regarding whatever you wanted to prove by those uh, med medical data. Were you? Uh, f figures, Your Honor, I, um, we have cited and we will be citing more. Um, we will not be discouraged by uh, the impression I'm getting that this honorable court is not um, prepared to um, accept findings from medical journals. We will not be discouraged by that. We no, will, no. We will I, continue. I, am, I am going to invite you, if not for myself, then for other members of the court as well, to submit to us learned treatises which we yes. may take judicial notice of yes, and yes. as exceptions to the hearsay rule. Yes, yes. Uh, we will do that, definitely. This is not an unprecedented invitation because uh, I know that. if no one else will welcome it, I will. I'm very happy to hear that. Thank you so much, Your Honor. We will definitely do that. This will not be about facts. This will be about expert yes. information. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Council, uh, I hope there is no further question from any of my colleagues because the night is moving on and we have miles to go before we sleep, right? So uh, please note, Council, that uh, we encourage you not to make premature conclusions about our positions here. In fact, if anything, all the questions that were propounded are actually enabling you to prepare a better memorandum. Yes, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Better that you heard our questions directly and they are given the chance to rectify whatever deficiencies there are than for you to find out that we are debating questions already that you never heard propounded. Yes, Your Honor. So uh, please Thank note you so much. that uh, this is, in fact, the nature of these deliberations. We do not prejudge. Yes. In the same way that I th don't think you should jump to any conclusion as of yet. I have not uh, come to any conclusion, Your Honor. The, uh, just one note. I was the counsel for the uh, province of North Cotabato in 2008, and the petitioners won. Even though you have been using that to show that uh, this case is not premature, let me point out that there were two factual items that made it very, very different from what we have. There was no other recourse but to go to this court because the, the draft treaty had already been initialed. Second, people had already died because of violent clashes. That sets it apart and cannot serve as a precedent for you to dispo, dispense with the legal requirements for bringing your petition. You still, ha you still have the burden of proving the same as suggested by some of us. So yes, please note that very carefully. I will, okay. yes. We I will, will resume our session on July 23, and we will uh, proceed uh, right away with the presentation of Attorney Liban. Yes, on July 23, same venue, same time. If there is no further question or comment from any of my colleagues, the session is hereby adjourned. All right. Please remain in your respective seats until the Chief Justice and the Associate Justices leave the session hall.